basically we classify in terms of intermittent and persistent symptoms. Intermittent symptoms, we classify symptoms present less than four days per week and less than four weeks per year. Persistent is someone who has more than four days per week and more than four weeks per year. This is what is classification of an allergic rhinitis. Now, based on severity, if we have to classify allergic rhinitis, we would say mild and moderate severe. In mild, there is no interference in daily activity. In moderate, there is presence of at least one. Either there's an impaired sleep or there are troublesome symptoms, other troublesome symptoms which are interfering with the day-to-day -day activity. So now this, this is important because uh, I am just rushing through most of these slides, but if you see this severity classification is important because this will be a goal of management. So when you decide upon what kind of management you need to give the patient, this classification between intermittent and persistent and severity will be an important factor in guiding you towards the management protocol you need to follow for a patient of allergic rhinitis. So this is important. I think we can come back to this slide if you want afterwards. But yes, remember that there is intermittent and persistent classification and there is classification based on severity. Now, what are the complications person can have? Allergic asthma, chronic otitis media, hearing loss because of blockage of the station tube and other problems. Then they can be chronic nasal obstruction. They can be sinusitis. Then there can be orthodontic malocclusion in children. So these are the complications. Now, what are the typical signs and symptoms of an allergic rhinitis? We generally have sneezing, itchy nose, rhinorrhea, post-nasal drip, congestion, anosmia, means loss of smell, headache, earache, tearing of eyes, there'll be blushing of eyes, red eyes, swollen eyes, periorbital edema may be there, fatigue may be there, drowsiness, malaise. These all are typical signs and symptoms of a allergic rhinitis, patient of allergic rhinitis. Now, when you do a physical examination, what exactly can you expect to find? As in a general practice, if you're seeing not as a, I, I don't see as an ENT surgeon what you're expecting to find, but as a general physician, what are you expecting to find in the case of allergic rhinitis? You will find a nasal crease. So basically, if you see over here, there's a nasal crease. This, this is found in patients of allergic rhinitis. And the principal predominant cause for this is this, like this baby putting a hand to his nose because it's always runny nose mucus is there. So that causes a nasal crease. Then there'll be thin watery secretions. If you examine uh, properly with a scope or through a torchlight, you will may happen to see a deviated or a perforated nasal septum. You may see uh, abnormal flexibility of the tympanic membrane. You may see redness of the conjunctiva, flushing of the eyes, and there may be periorbital edema. These are the general physical findings. Now, in terms of investigations, like I said, there are multiple tests. Uh, there's an allergy test also, which I think does about 1600 allergens, but I think that's not important over here. What important is you just check a CBC, maybe an IgE level histamine nasal smear. You can do a skin test or an intranasal provocation. But in most cases, a good CBC count is sufficient to estimate, okay, everything else is fine. We are looking at a... So what, what a CBC test would be helping us with is mainly telling us that there's no infection involved. There's no fever, there's no infection. So basically we will try with symptoms and the CBC, we can classify in 99% of the cases that yes, it's an allergic rhinitis. Now prognosis, what exactly is the prognosis? So prognosis for patients with allergic rhinitis is relatively good because treatment is available, but there is no mortality. There is high morbidity. People have difficulty in lifestyles if they have severe cases of allergic rhinitis, but yes, there is no mortality and the symptoms generally improve with age and though treatment is available, but patients can generally avoid the allergen if they can identify one to have a healthy, non-morbid lifestyle. Now, when we talk about management, there are three classifications of management of an allergic rhinitis. One is medical treatment. Second is exposure, avoiding the exposure. And third is surgery. Surgical option is a very limited option. The most important one is the avoiding of exposure and medical treatment. And this is where I would like to spend much more time on 
because as as doctors we are supposed to do two things first is diagnosis that's the most important part so just stopping over here i'll just say if i need to diagnose a patient with allergic rhinitis what i need to do is there are three steps i need to do the first step is see the history and signs and symptoms so this will be the first indicator the second is i need to get a blood test done to just confirm the that yes there is raised eosinophils you can get a ige level done just to check that tlc is more or less normal it's not an infection category and the third thing that you need to do is basically classify that once you diagnose the allergic rhinitis you need to classify that under intermittent or persistent and the severity of uh, rhinitis because this after diagnosis and categorization starts your management protocol so like i say the first thing is avoiding the exposure so if the patient is having an identifiable allergen so you minimize that contact with that allergen if it's due to bedding or something you again avoid that allergen so the, the basically it's it comes under the protocol that wherever the allergen may be you eliminate that if there is no identifiable allergen for the patient a good a, as a good clinical practice you should take good history of the patient in terms of a schedule from morning to evening and as a medical practitioner i can assure you you will be able to find out from the regular routine of a patient if the patient gives a good history you will be able to identify or pinpoint two or three probable sources of allergen and then you can ask the patient to look forward for it to identify if these two or three are the sources of allergy because avoidance is the best best treatment for uh, allergic rhinitis because the kind of morbidity allergic rhinitis brings is difficult so it's like what patients describe to me is they are not fully unhealthy and they are not fully healthy so that's that's basically once you have an infection you have a bacterial infection you have fever viral bac bacteremia you are down on bed the per person has extreme fatigue malaise weakness febrile everything so the patient says okay i'll take rest because i cannot do anything else but a patient with even a severe patient of allergic rhinitis has difficulty in doing everything but he or she says that i don't i can still do lot of things so it's it's a case scenario wherein the person is not completely down on bed but does the work with a complete uh, difficulty so that's where it, this becomes important 